Good morning, good morning, good morning. This morning is brought to you by the same thing that gets us going every morning, which is our cup of coffee made with our AeroPress coffee maker. Ours in particular has made one, two, three, four, well over a thousand cups of coffee and is still going strong. Actually, a thousand times two, we get two cups and our cups are big cups. <laughs> Now we've made a lot of coffee on that thing. This is not a commercial for AeroPress, but if you're traveling small with your backpacking, which you're probably not if you're watching our channel, or you are on the road living in a small space like us, or you live in a tiny home or whatever, you don't have space for a coffee maker, you don't want to run power to a coffee maker, the AeroPress is fantastic. We begin every morning with a delicious cup of AeroPress made coffee. As for today, Lindsay's in her horse gear, we're gonna go horsing today, horsing around. We're going to go horsing around. We're going to go horsing around. <laughs> We're not going to go horsing around, actually. We volunteered today to go... Actually, I volunteered Lindsay to go scooping, pooping. Thanks. Pooping, scooping? <laughs> scooping, pooping. Scooping, 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 poo. Scooping, poo. <laughs> scooping, poo. A little bit of her southern scooping accent. Poo. Scooping, poo. Scooping, poo. She's going to go scoop some poo because uh, we learned they give... Uh, here at the Rancho El Camino, the horses don't get a day off of eating and pooping. Um, but the staff gets Sunday and Monday off and we're here on Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning, there's a whole lot of poo to scoop. <laughs> poo to scoop. Yeah. I'm not going to scoop poo because I've never had an attraction whatsoever to horse poop. But Lindsay's always said, and we, and no kidding, we've been out on hikes in the middle of nowhere and she'll get this whiff and she'll be like, there's a horse nearby. I mean, it's, it's like a sixth sense for her. She can smell poop before the poop has even fallen out of a horse. That's way <laughs> 10 miles off through a canyon and we'll be on a hike and she'll know it's there. She just has a sixth sense about horses. So we're gonna go hang out. Lindsay's gonna go scoop some poo. I'm gonna walk the dogs around the, the, uh, the ranch, go see if I can help out in another way. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful place. It is awesome, it's amazing. We've learned a little bit about it so far. We'll learn more today, um, but essentially, the land was donated almost 20 years ago and it butts up right against this beautiful mountain. It's an oasis, there's a spring on it, so it's a natural source of water here in Baja. Water is very, very uh, important. A lot of times for these little ranches it gets shipped out or trucked out to, to people, um, but they actually have a spring here. So, and it's a literal oasis in the middle of the desert. It's all lush green plants and they're, they've got some cool stuff going on where they're actually, I forgot what it's called, it's aquaponics, Aqu yeah, but something, it's something like that. Um, it's where they're actually using tilapia. It's a closed system where the tilapia are swimming in this water, the tilapia poop, and that poopy water is rich in nutrients, and then it gets dripped into the agriculture side of things. So they're growing uh, with like tomatoes yeah, and like spinach tomatoes. and some other things. And then that water, as it drips through, any extra water that comes out of the plants gets collected and it gets piped right back into the tilapia. So it's a beautiful closed system. Um, it's something that's really catching on all over the world in places to help people be more um, more sustainable um, and teaching communities to be able to grow their own crops. They'll end up with uh, eating sized tilapia as well as plants that they'll, um, they'll be able to harvest, the agriculture side of things. So it's really cool that they're doing this here and they're teaching the kids about that in the local community. Um, there was disc golf, of course, which is an attraction coming in here. It's made by a world famous, uh, super awesome professional disc golfer. Um, I'll forgot, I forgot his name. I'm sorry, guy. Um, but he gets paid a lot of money to actually throw frisbee. So I missed my calling in life, as Lindsay pointed out yesterday. Yeah, because he did really good. He did really. He, you did. Really I did good. really well. Yeah. No, I, I didn't do really well. I did. I just had fun. You know, when you're going out there, when you're not getting paid millions of dollars to do something, you're just going out to have fun. You tend to do better and then you're like, oh, if I got paid a million dollars to do this, that would be amazing. And then you go try to do it for real you suck. and you suck. So I'm content that I am a amateur, amateur disc golf person. I don't even disc golfer, whatever, whatever you call it. Um, super amateur. But Thermopolis, Wyoming has a diff, disc golf course too. So I think on some of my off days there, when we get to Wyoming, I might go practice a little bit. And then maybe I'll try out for the tour. A <laughs> little, uh, yeah. There's a tour? I mean, there's a professional league, oh, so yeah. So they gotta have some kind of a tour. Anyway, rambling now. We're gonna get started with our day, starting with our cup of coffee, brought to you by our AeroPress. Link in description below, of course, but you probably already know about AeroPress because everybody knows about AeroPress because it's so amazing for RV life. Catch you soon.
you got me scooping poop anyway. <laughs> you know what this is? You know what this is, Lindsay? What? This is a pile of horse. <laughs> Got my hat and sunglasses on, sitting behind the steering wheel. That means? It's a drive day. Kinda. Yeah, oh well, yeah. It, it just means we're leaving. We're just leaving where we, where we parked at last So time. we're leaving the ranch, Camino, uh, what is it? Rancho El ranch Camino. Camino. Um, we didn't get to see a whole lot. Today is a down day, it's slow. It's leading up to Easter. I heard a little bit, so we did scoop the poop and um, then we were invited to go to a Bible study and that was cool. It was in all in Spanish, which was interesting. Um, and so after the meeting or at the end, they were kind of talking about the plans for the next two weeks because we're about two weeks out of Easter and things get really busy for them around that time. So this is kind of a slow season, um, an in-between season for them. So we didn't get involved very much with the kids. In fact, we didn't see any kids. Yeah. Um, but what they do is they bring them in here and they engage them in all kinds of fun activities and really invest in the, the neighborhood kids from all the ranchitos out here, the little ranches. We're on the outskirts of La Paz. So um, that means um, these kids are probably the least served in terms of school and socialization because they live down miles down dirt roads in desolate little areas. And so uh, this ranch is really a, a sign of hope for those kids. And um, from what we understand, it gets really, really busy. They have horse riding, they have the disc golf, um, there's sports they do, yeah, they've they got a basketball, school. They have basketball, they have like a gym. There's a pool you saw. Yeah. Um, so there's all kinds of things for the kids here. And so if you're ever in the area, it's definitely worth camping. Your money goes to a great cause. 200 pesos to camp. Again, um, we threw another 200 in just because we played some disc golf and because this is a great place to um, invest pesos in people's lives. So we are going to wrap up from here. And it's errand day, sort of. Yeah. We're going to run into town. We're going to get water, drinking water. We're going to fill up our tank with water as well. We gotta go get some groceries. Yep, we're gonna do our grocery run, stock up, because we're gonna be heading to the Bay of Conception where yep. there's not a lot of stuff. There's not hardly anything. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna be doing that and uh and then hopefully have dinner tonight with Scott and Melissa and, and Serge, Serge and Natalie. Natalie and Max, and they'll join us yeah. um hopefully for dinner in town. We are going to be camping at La Maranatha in town, as we've mentioned before. It's really the only campground in town where you can go if you wanna be close to La Paz. And that's our plan. We're going to go there and we're going to be, uh, hopefully get a, a taxi or an Uber down to the Malacan or wherever we decide to meet for dinner. And uh, that's because it's about 10 minutes or so, the closest you can be to downtown La Paz if you live in an RV like ours and you're not stealth camping. We could never get away with stealth camping. Not in this thing. No. no. Only way we can And it was hard in the truck camper too, but we did. We did get away with it, I guess. Yeah. Here's an idea for but... stealth camping in this thing. What if we just went to RV dealerships? And just pulled up on the lot <laughs> and pretended like we were just another class C for sale. Yeah. And they like, a for sale sign like in the window. Then they open the door in the morning and come in like trying to show the, the, the RV. <laughs> They'd be like, where did this one be come from? Be a little awkward. <laughs> Maybe that's where we could get top dollar for this thing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. like $50,000. Yeah, that's I what wish. I'm thinking. $50,000 and a dog. Your dog. You can no. pick which... No, then we, you said that before. He threw Huck in for, for free with a $50,000 no, purchase. No, they bought it for like sixty grand. Maybe. We're not looking to sell unless you're willing to pay a ridiculous amount of money for this. <laughs> and we get to keep our dogs. Um, anyway, we're not talking about that. But that's the only way I think we could stealth camp would be if we were to go and, uh, and just go from dealership to dealership and just pull <laughs> up on the lot. That's funny. Anyway, we're going to get on the road. It is not my favorite road. It's going to be three and a half miles of washboards. It wasn't that bad coming in. That's though. because I, I got the whole down worse. So trick with washboards, if you don't know, you got to go fast. And uh, yeah, we've definitely been down worse. But if I can get up to speed over 30, 40 miles an hour, which before you critique me, those of you who are going to critique me, um, we've seen everybody on this road driving yeah, that they're fast. they're hauling butt down so this road. So when you are on washboards, assuming you're not going in loop-de-loop -loop circles, and not circles, but turns, go pretty fast and you kind of hover above them. That's the trick. That's the plan. That's what I'm going to try to do. You can come with us if you want. <laughs> First stop is the Agua Purificada, which is the purified water station. 
there are tons of these in Baja and uh, so you just pull up in our case you need to ask for a hose because um, sometimes the hose that you carry doesn't work it's called Manguera and uh, you, if you have a hose or they have a hose you can connect right up to your RV um, but also they do five gallon waters this place is our absolute favorite of all the water purification places in Baja family is really really nice um, there's laundry right next door so we usually double up and do laundry when we're picking up water um, but it's they're just really great really friendly people and uh, it's relatively cheap it's about 15 pesos or 75 cents for every five gallons of water um, so we can fill up all of our drinking water for under 100 pesos and we can top off our tank in our RV for under 100 pesos so about eight dollars or so will fill us all up with water for this trip that'll get us all the way through a week and a half um, of being able to have drinking water as well as being able to boondock with the water that we have in our tank in our RV. Check this out. Oh, cool! I always look for trucker hats. I'm looking for the ultimate one. This may be it. Steve, <laughs> if you're watching, it's not a pink shirt, but it's a pink hat. I noticed uh, one of the sons is wearing a pink hat. It was a trucker hat. It had the company name on <laughs> and want to support this company every way we can. Not a lot of people, I'm sure we can not send a lot of business this way, but uh, buying this hat is a little bit extra I can give them. So, <laughs> so I'm cool. stoked. I'm going to be wearing this till the white is no longer white and the pink is no longer pink. <laughs> and this is uh, my favorite grocery store in La Paz. I like it way better than Walmart. It's really nice. It's got pretty much everything you need. They have like uh, an American section with like imported stuff. They have vegan cheese, which I can't eat mozzarella, so I can buy the vegan cheese and make my own pizzas if I want. Uh, they have everything. It's great. So. Well, that was not a cheap trip to the grocery store, but we got everything we're gonna need for the next two weeks, so I can justify that expense. I think, um, aside from fuel, we spend more money on groceries because we don't really go out a whole lot. Um, so it's okay that we spent that kind of money. I think it was, I don't even know, I, I stopped keeping track at like 160. 3,200 pesos. 3,200 pesos, $160. Not bad, that's four days of full budget. If you look at $40 a day is our budget. And this food will last a lot longer than four days, so. Oh, yeah. Um, it's gonna last, I mean, some of it's gonna last two weeks, easy. So, anyway, last stop today is where we're gonna park for the day, which is La Maranatha, and we're gonna go do that right now. The campground. This is the look of a man who finally got a shower after six weeks or so without a real shower. Doing military showers on the beach. And uh, we're here at the, the campground. We splurged, we got full hookups, so we actually had air conditioned today as well. It's fantastic. It's 92 degrees again. Hot, hot, hot. Not even April yet, just barely the end of March. 
and it's already very hot down here. Um, but it is our last night in La Paz. We're all dressed up, sort of. That's why I did the, I mean, look at that. Look how clean that is. Uh, and look at that. Look how pretty she looks. I heard the hair dryer going. Did you I didn't really do I just, I just didn't want it super damp going out, so I just got it a little dry. <laughs> so we got all prettied up. We're going to go out with Scott and Melissa. They're going to meet us from the beach with their boys, and they're bringing Serge and Natalie and Max, and we're going to meet up with them. And for Serge and Natalie and Max, we're going to say farewell. We never say goodbye because we believe we'll always have a chance to meet somebody again somewhere down the line, especially people as awesome and genuine and really um, true to heart as as Serge and Natalie and Max. So um, it's going to be bittersweet saying farewell to them. We're going to go have a great time hanging out and then uh, and then we will go our merry way back here and uh, tomorrow morning we'll get up and we'll start driving north. I don't think we celebrate that, do we? No. <laughs> So we just celebrate Bay of Conception, I guess, to see that again. So. Yes, that's the one thing yes. about leaving La Paz and leaving the beaches in La Paz is we're trading them in for another beach, our favorite beaches. Um, but uh, yeah. it means we're headed back to the States. Yep. God bless America, but this is, this is beautiful down here. This is a wonderful life. So, let's go to dinner. I'm hungry. <laughs>